Hi, my name is Raymond Neves. With Click, I'm a member of the Global Enablement Architecture Research Team. Welcome to this Click video. In this security overview video, we will look at the basic security concept using a business scenario driven approach. In this presentation, we're going to talk about basic security aspects using ClickSense Enterprise. We set the stage by going through different business scenarios, including key risks and control. Before we dive into the details, let's first discuss the whole purpose of security in ClickSense. You want to empower your end users with more self-serve capabilities, which is one of the key capabilities of ClickSense. But how do we keep our environment in control? Giving our users more freedom does not mean freedom to let all users create and do everything. So what kind of governance should we implement? In other words, how can we achieve our goal that the business really gets better and faster decisions are made using a secure system? It's all about the business, but how do we ensure to get a reliable and secure information management process? Based on our experience, we have identified the following key risks that we need to mitigate using both applications and procedural controls. The key risks are unreliable reporting, multiple versions of the truth, user requirements are not met, performance issues, and finally the risk that information is disclosed to unauthorized persons. To mitigate these risks, we have to identify what causes them, so that we can find controls to prevent or limit the impact of those risks. Therefore, it's key that we define a process with, with clear roles and responsibilities to ensure everyone only performs the activities for which they are trained and authorized on. This also has another advantage. It means you think and document first before you implement. This ensures ClickSense security alignment with your business goals. We will govern ClickSense in two steps. First, we designed a process using a couple of scenarios which simulates the requirements of your business because a small firm have different demands than a large enterprise. We will start with a simple one and extend the business requirements along the way. We call these the authorization business rules. Secondly, using this design, we will implement this authorization framework in ClickSense. This ensures operational effectiveness, a system that is documented and works according to a design approved by the business. As discussed, we will start setting up security design for a simple company and create more advanced scenarios along the way. We have identified three types of company structures. A small environment in which the only requirement is to have a segregation of duties between IT and the business. IT will manage the QMC and the business will manage the hub. A medium-sized business in which we want to have a segregation of duties between IT and the business, but also want to have a more fine-grained control within the business. We would like to authorize on departments. This means we would like to ensure that each department only sees their own apps. And third, a large enterprise in which we extend our scenario with more fine-grained control on the IT side. We would like to make a split between audit, content, security and deployment activities. This video is meant to give you an overview to the concept of ClickSense security. In later videos, we will also cover more advanced scenarios like SAML, ticketing, header and other authentication integration scenarios. Therefore, we will start simple and assume that you would like to reuse the existing authorizations, which already have to find your source systems. Another assumption is that you already have to find roles and groups in your source systems, which reflect the authorization position or the department of the user. For example, if a user works for the finance department, we assume the user has a role finance in a source system. If the user works for IT, we assume he has an IT role, etc. We start with the security requirements for a small firm. We would like to create a segregation of duties between the business and IT. How can we do this? We create a ClickSense security approach in two steps. First, we will make a design and document our security requirements. Secondly, using this design, we will implement the security in ClickSense. In the design part, it is important to define a process in which steps or tasks are defined. For each activity, we then have to specify which users should be able to do certain activities in ClickSense. 
in more advanced terms, we say we have to look at the authentication and authorization aspects. Authentication, who is the user that wants to access ClickSense? And authorization means, given that ClickSense knows who the user is, what can the user see or do? Let's take a real life example from the airport and see what authentication and authorization means in this case. A user arrives at the custom desk and shows his password to the custom officer. The officer performs the authentication check. It validates whether you are who you say you are. After the authentication check is successful, you can walk to the gate. There are many gates in the airport, but based on your ticket, access is granted to only one gate. We can also say that you are only authorized to access the gate that is included on your ticket. So let's summarize this one more time because this flow is exactly the way ClickSense handles authentication and authorization. First, the user authenticates his passport. At this point, we know who the user is. Secondly, the user is only authorized to access the gate which is included on the ticket. On this slide, we will show you the authentication and authorization process, but this time for ClickSense. ClickSense has multiple authentication scenarios like SAML, LDAP, header, and ticketing solutions. Let's start with an example that is based on Windows Active Directory. Notice our user John on the left. We assume the user has a Windows laptop and wants to log into ClickSense. First, John logs into his PC. where Windows validation of the user takes place. Next, he browses to the ClickSense hub. Out of the box, ClickSense is configured in such a way that ClickSense can ask Windows who the user is if ClickSense doesn't already know this. Our user John has not logged in, so ClickSense forward him to the ClickSense Windows authentication module. This module uses a user directory connector, known as UDC to ask Windows Active Directory the following questions. Hey Windows, I have a user called John. Do you have some group membership for me? Windows returns the group, and from this moment ClickSense authentication is completed. ClickSense now knows that the logged in user is John and that he's a member of the group Human Resource and Manager. Remember that I told you to remember the concept of the air ticket of the previous slide? Well, here it is again. The ClickSense authentication module also creates a ticket in which the user ID and its group memberships are stored. Note that the concept is exactly the same. First, you have to authenticate yourself at the customer desk or, in our case, to the ClickSense proxy. We trust that Windows has already performed the authentication check, so we can just reuse the knowledge. This means that you only have to create users and groups one time in Windows, if you like, and just reuse them in ClickSense. Secondly, using the information on your ticket, ClickSense security rules can now present you the authorized resources like streams and apps. At this point, we have seen the complete flow from the user accessing Windows to reusing the user credentials to grant access to authorized click resources. Let's get more insight into how you can configure ClickSense authorization. We talked about getting a clear view on who should do which task in ClickSense. We encourage you to write down your security requirements in an authorization business rules document. This document describes on a high level how ClickSense should be secured. Multiple scenarios, as shown in 1B, are possible. For now, we we'll look at scenario 1A, where we would like to make a split between the business and IT task. The beauty of Click is that it allows you to authorize on any resource. As you know, ClickSense functionality can be divided into the QMC and the hub. Using this division, we can give IT user access to the QMC context and the business users to the hub context. Note that basically everything in ClickSense is a resource which you can use to authorize on. So if you want to go deeper, you can also authorize on specific sections in the QMC or to the streams, apps, sheets, dimensions, measures, etc. We will look at this in more detail in the advanced sections of this video series. 
Now that we have a clear view on the security requirements, we can implement the authorizations in ClickSense. The authorization mechanism works in two steps. First, you need to provide access to the resource in ClickSense. Example resources are QMC, the hub, streams and apps. Secondly, you need to provide access to the data inside an app if you choose to enable role-level security. You manage the access to resources via the security rules in the QMC. You can manage data filtering, or also called role-level security, by making use of a mechanism called section access inside the script of an app. Let's take a closer look at the first step of the authorization mechanism, the authorization on resources. After the authentication part is completed, which basically answered the question, who are you? You need to set up the authorization, which is basically answer the question, what is a user allowed to do or see? The key things you can protect in ClickSense are called resources. Example resources on the client side are referred to as hub contacts. Examples are streams, apps, object types inside an app like sheets, story, dimension, measures, library from master items, the load script, or the data model viewer. On the admin side, called management console, QMC context, you can authorize on all the sections visible, including reload tasks, security configuration, apps, streams, and user configuration. There is no mandatory structure you have to follow in ClickSense. The design is very flexible. If you want to use a resource, you need to have a security rule that allows you to access the resource. It has the following logic. Allow the user to do action on the resource provided a certain condition is true. Note that by default access to all resources is denied. In other words, if a user tries to access a resource, for example an app, ClickSense filter all the security rules that are relevant for this resource type app. And the user needs at least one security rule that evaluates the true before I can access it. Properties connected to a resource and users may be used in the rule. Examples of these properties are the name or group of the user. You can then compare with the name other properties of the app, streams or any other resource. Back to our scenario. Using the security rules, we can provide access to resources if a certain condition is met. So each time the user tries to access a resource, like a stream or app, all relevant security rules of ClickSense are evaluated. In our case, IT users should have access to the QMC and the business users to the hub. Let's look at how we can enforce the restrictions using the security rules. In our case, we would like to give access to the context QMC. If the following security rule evaluates the true. If the group of the user equals admin from the IT department, then you are allowed to access the resources in the QMC. For the business users, we create another security rule that provides access to the context hub. If the user group of the user equals business, then you are allowed to access the hub. Now we have secured access to ClickSense resources using the security rules. The next step could be to limit which data and field a user can see inside an app. We call this mechanism section access. We will explain the concept in more details in the advanced videos, but the concept is as follows. Using section access, you can enforce that each user only sees the data values they are authorized on, based on, for example, user ID or group membership. As an example, it is possible to provide authorizations for a specific department or country within an app. ClickSense can load your security table with the user or group information as a regular table. We place this information in a special section in the Click script called Section Access. This part of the script behaves exactly the same as the normal script. The exception is that it makes a mandatory selection or filter at the moment the user opens the app. In the example above, Using a section access table, we can enforce that user John, in this case, only sees sales orders with employee ID 32. Note that you can use both users and groups, and you can restrict on any field, including hierarchies. Now we will summarize the authentication and authorization flow. 
the user at the PC logging into the ClickSense hub. The ClickSense proxy redirects the request to the identity provider. In the example we used previously, the redirect will be done to Microsoft Active Directory. At the moment the credentials match, the user and group membership from the identity provider will be redirected with a ticket. As we now have learned, as that only the authorization part is done by click. Based on security rules and section access, the authenticated user will be granted access to the click apps and resources. Let us recap what we have talked about in this video. In this security overview, we have seen that streams have a folder-like structure where you can regulate access based on a group. In our example case, we use IT and business as roles. The finding security rules in ClickSense allows you to grant users and groups access based on resource authorization. The end result is that using resource authorization, the user will only see the apps and resources to which the user has access to. That includes the number of streams, apps and other functionality. In addition to security rules, you can use section access. Once you apply section access, you are able to limit what data and fields a user can see inside an app. ClickSense is able to leverage existing groups and roles within the organization using a security rule which dynamically grants access. This example shows that if the user.group, for example human resource, is the same as resource.name, human resource department, then a human resource user from this group will automatically have access to the human resource stream. So, no matter how many groups you have within the organization, they can all be governed by this security rule. This concludes the security overview video. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Raymond Neves. Within Click, I'm a member of the Global Enablement Architecture Research Team. Welcome to this Click video. In this security overview video, we will look at the basic security concept using a business scenario driven approach.